Hello, welcome, Commissar Mark here. Today we'll be taking a look at something different. Today we'll be taking a look at Stronghold games, particularly Stronghold 1 and Stronghold Crusader 1. These are management games in which you take charge of building a castle and a medieval economy to go with it. Uh, the first game is all about defending it against attacks and playing the campaign or specific missions. While Stronghold Crusader actually has AI lords you can fight, they will build castles and such. And I will show you how to properly build an economy in these games. So, uh, the first thing you need to do on most maps is build a keep. This is the place where you will get your peasants and it will have a stockpile nearby. Usually you want to site your keep somewhere where there is plenty of flat terrain, so you can actually build around it without much difficulty, and natural resources are usually a concern, so for example we have stone here that could be useful to have nearby. However, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just gonna show you the basics. So let's place the keep. The keep itself does have a population cap, you can see down here, it's 1 out of 12, that means people, there is a person that's gonna come and serve us already. We have some resources that have been deposited on the stockpile, which is this. And we have a lord. If the lord dies, the game is over. And he will wander around. You can order him and such, but... For now, the game wants us to build a granary. Now, with building the granary, uh, there are two things to consider. If you are going for an economy that's going to be sustained by orchards or cow farms, you actually want a lot of empty space around it, so the... Walkers from the farms will have a very short distance to travel But you want to place it in a defensible position as well oh, The second thing you might want to do is build it nearby your stockpile uh, So that you can actually Get some bakeries nearby if you are going with bread Bread is very good and efficient, but sometimes when especially you don't have uh, As much in terms of resources you might go for apples. They are very efficient. So let's just place uh, our granary right here, it's gonna get some food, people will consume food at a rate that's determined by the amount of your peasants and since we didn't actually receive all the resources, let's expand the stockpile. Stockpile doesn't cost anything, so you can just build it up. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is build ourselves a couple of woodcutter huts. You want to place them nearby the trees that are nearest to the keep because we need to clear these trees out anyway. So I'll start with right about six and that's what you do on most missions. However, the thing that I'm gonna showcase is how to build the economy properly. So, let's take a look. We have these apple orchards, and if we press spacebar, we can minimize the granary, so you can actually sh see the outline, and then you'll build the farms adjacent to the granary, so that the walkers from the farms will have only the apples to collect, and then very short route, to travel in order to deposit those apples into the granary because that will skyrocket in terms of efficiency otherwise you'd have to wait around a lot now we start with quite a bit of food so let's increase the rations already you can see that we have plus four popularity from that and we can set our taxation so if we take a look at our overall popularity Looks like we have plus five because we have plus one from two types of food because we have meat and fruit So that means we can go to average taxes immediately and since we are running low on pop space I'll actually build another hovel. Usually you want to build your hovels out of uh, way because otherwise this all, uh, whole area will be developed and it will get in the way So on most maps you have things like inaccessible cliffs things like that the huts themselves don't actually need to be connected to anything So there is no real disadvantage to placing them out of sight if you don't go for mass uh, Religion which I'm gonna explain a religion in a bit You also cannot build too close to signposts Signposts are actually the places where enemies would arrive from if there are enemies on the map, which there are not here because this is a free build mission. So let's place a couple of houses. Each of them is gonna supply space for eight peasants and they cost just a little bit of wood. Now, woodcutters will get to work uh, as well as our orchard people. So let's just watch them do their job. So you can see exactly what I meant by explaining that before. So they are gonna go around collecting apples and when they collect enough, they will go and deposit it into the granary and then go back to work. 
So this is very efficient. If you have your industry spread around, it will take ages for people to actually do their work and they will spend like 20% of their time doing their work and then less, uh, the rest of it is gonna be traveling, which is not what you want. Now, uh, on most maps, you will want to produce weapons. I like to build my armory uh, nearby my campfire and that's place where you can deposit your weapons into. Now, uh, workshops for weapons actually cost quite a bit of gold and gold is generated mainly by taxation at this point. We could also sell some resources to get gold and since we started with some iron, which I don't really want, we can just build a marketplace and then sell that. Also sell the stone, just so I can have enough to showcase the workshops. Let's speed it up a little bit so that we can have more food and we are gonna expand this a little bit. I'm gonna actually invest into a couple of uh, cow farms as well for the second food type. It's not the most efficient, the cow farms are much worse than the fruit farms, especially considering they cost double wood. But more food types mean more popularity. Looks like our stocks are still growing, so let's increase it once more to double rations. That's the most we can get. And let's speed it up until we can get some wood. When we get the wood, I'm gonna show you how to build your industry properly. So let's take a look. We still need a little more. So let's give them a little bit of time. Okay, seems like we might have enough. So let's take a look at the Fletchers. They can, I can actually show you with the ball turners because they are cheaper. Um, right, so buildings like this and they actually take up 3x3 three three space, uh, I think it's 3x3, three three. oh it's 4x4 four four space, sorry. And they will have an employee that's gonna continuously grab timber to make it into weapons and then deposit the weapons into the armory. Now, same sort of principle applies here, where you want your employees to be as close to the stockpile as possible in order to grab the resources, process them and then drop them off as quickly as possible. And you will want many many workshops usually. So if we build them in a grid, uh, you would want that to be something like this. 4x4 four four workshops are pretty good like this, efficient, they can get around, walk around to grab the resources, go back and keep spaces in between. You can see how much space I left. It's one tile, but it's enough for travel. And then if you want to expand this, you would actually build up on the side and build another 4x4 four four, and then here another 4x4. Four four. So just expand upon it up until it reaches a point where it's large enough and you're happy with it. You can also expand the armor and <clears throat> there you go. Um, pretty simple, just you need to keep in mind that the travel time significantly impacts your efficiency. So at all times just try to keep it to a minimum. Uh, I will also show you a trick. Uh, so if we get rid of our stockpiles, which we can destroy them with this cross button. Uh, if you destroy a stockpile, you won't get refunded any resources uh, that are currently on it. So it's advised to spend it all. But for the sake of show showing you things, if you had a map in which you already started a keep somewhere and you would, would want your stockpile to be anywhere else, you can just spend the initial resources destroy that stockpile and then rebuild it, for example, nearby the stone if you want it to set up your industry here. You would still have to keep and the peasants here, but it's not, there is no need to keep your granary and the stockpile near there. It just have, has to be defensible because enemies would actually destroy these, so just keep that in mind. Also, uh, something to note, in Stronghold 1, the Lord is actually very weak compared to Stronghold Crusader, so if you're used to using that one, uh, you're not gonna have a good time. This guy sucks at fighting, so just keep him safe, better not take any chances. Also, in Stronghold 1, you cannot really order him to go at a ground position, you can just order him to go to the keep or fight enemies if there is an enemy present, but he cannot just walk around on your orders. Otherwise, your Lord is gonna frequent your troops, he's gonna go and order them a little bit and come back, that's what he likes to do, or walk around your defenses and castle structures. But anyways, that's gonna be it for the basic tutorial, I think. Later on, if you are interested, we could cover all the various things you can do for popularity, we could 
cover religion and also if you are building on an economic economic mission where there are fires you actually would not be able to do this efficient setup because fires actually spread from building to building so you would want to your building spread out even though it's horrible for efficiency the economic missions are set up with that in mind usually so until next time cheers <laughs>